So I thought it was so fitting that your podcast, the most recent one, talking about healthy habits over dieting and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So if you could just kind of talk about that and how it fits in with this event and what this event is all about. So uh, I'm an ambassador for Rally Health and I think it uh, is a great partnership because we both care about helping people get healthy and uh, making it simple. And Mm -hmm. so my podcast, yeah, that's my focus kind of every week is I'm on a mission to get better Mm -hmm. in all areas of life, but really health and wellness is a focus. Um, And, you know, I've gone through a lot of different journeys. I've gone through the weight loss journey. I've gone through the health crisis journey. And my main message is to have people really focus on their health and make it a priority in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're younger, you kind of take it for granted. For sure. And you don't really think about where you're going to end up long term. And so you have to start building healthy habits, not just food wise, but like emotionally and physically, spiritually, all of that so that you have a good foundation because things are going to keep happening. Right. And you need to be as prepared as possible. Right. Um, So with your podcast, what can listeners look forward to? So with the podcast, I'm actually going to be rebranding it to um, Better Together uh, because I feel like it started in one place and now it's really evolved into just really a focus on health and wellness and any celebrity interviews that focus is going to be really on how they're getting better. And so just really inspiring people that have found a new way. I just interviewed this amazing woman. Her interview will be coming up soon. Um, her name is Susie Bates and she created Poopery. Have you heard oh, of Poopery? Yes, yes. Oh my God, she's unbelievable. <laughs> Serial entrepreneur, failed miserably, quit, went on a spiritual journey, and then founded Poopery and now it's worth like $700 million. Wow. And found her joy and her purpose and she figured out the right way to go about things. And so in the interview, she teaches us how to feel out what's right and what's wrong. And she talks about resonance and dissonance. And when you're in dissonance, everything feels heavy and difficult and you have to power through and you have to force and you have to will. And when you're in that place, that's not the right place. And that's not the right project or those aren't the right people to be working with. When you're in resonance, everything's flowing, you've got energy, you're lit up, you're alive that's where you want to be mm-hmm. in any pro- project you're working on or with any person that you're with. And those are just clear guidelines. Mm-hmm. And, and when you see someone who was in dissonance so much and was failing and then found resonance and now had her uber success, you're like, I want that. Yeah. And so I love interviewing people like that that can give us those tidbits that we can implement into our lives and make our lives better. And that's what we do with Rally Health, the same thing. Rally is devoted to helping people make their lives better every day and to do it in the easiest of ways. So this digital platform really helps people. It gives them the tools to make those simple decisions. It incentivizes you to take control of your health, get screened, pay you for your screenings, and and every day they're adding new products on to make your journey easier and better. And so it's, it's, it's a cool partnership. I'm really proud of it working with them. You're like the perfect person for that. Um, So I know you've probably heard this a million times. You wear a ton of hats. I feel you're working with AfterBuzz, your podcast. You have two books that Mm -hmm. are bestsellers. Um, So what's next or is there any other projects you are working on as well? So in thinking about kind of being in resonance and what really feels right and feels good. It's funny when I look at what I have on my plate, it's all health and wellness focused because that's where my passion is. Obviously I have AfterBuzz TV because I love television, that's for sure. Uh, So I have that, but everything that I'm moving forward on, I'm working on a documentary um, about my journey through the brain tumor experience and kind of helping women to see that we really put a lot of pressure on ourselves Mm -hmm. and uh, and how to kind of find our way out of that and create a new kind of model Mm -hmm. for us to to follow and then i have a show that i'm developing that is going to help families in crisis as a health show um and so yeah it really is just kind of all health and wellness focused and Mm -hmm. it's just from a passion point not like there's no mass like there's no big scheme or anything where you're like okay this is what i'm going to do next it just kind of happened right 
So. I know you've done a few acting gigs. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you still want to pursue or do want to do more of in the future as well? I thought about it. Um, I think if something came up that would be fun, I would be up for it. Mm -hmm. I always felt when I got to do it that it was a really fun way to be creative and just play. Yeah. So I love playing. So the door's so, open. Yeah. Um, so you <clears> did uh, touch a little bit on your brain tumor. What advice would you give people who are, I, I like this what you say, I think you got it from Tony Robbins, that life isn't happening to you, it's happening for you. Yep. Um, so what advice would you give someone who's kind of going through a rough time and um, something that they may see as a setback? So I say that from, the only way to grow is through pain, mm -hmm. right? That's when we push to our limit and you have a, a crossroads where you can make decisions and choices. And so when bad things are happening to you, try to step back, step back and say, why could this be happening? And how could it be to my benefit? Because we all focus on the pain and the negative, and then we surround ourselves with people who are gonna feel sorry for us, and then we're the victim and all of this. When you could say, hmm, maybe God, or maybe the universe, whatever you believe, has put this in my path for a reason. Mm -hmm. And then if you start to explore from there, you'll start to see that there was a reason. You know, for me, I needed to change my life. I needed to refocus. I was a human doing mm -hmm. rather than a human being. And I think a lot of women are in that place. Right. And I think being a communicator, I, it was meant to happen to me so that I could voice it and I could communicate it to people. So. There is always a secret gift in there. That's why people mm -hmm. say, you know, make lemonade or, um, or it must be happening for a reason. There is a truth to that. Right. So when people reach out to me and it happens daily and they're telling me they're diagnosed with something and usually it is a brain tumor, I tell them not to get distraught because it's not going to help them in the long term, right? Like initially, obviously you're going to be upset. <clears throat> but focusing on that isn't going to help you get past it. Mm -hmm. And we don't know anything. Right. So I always tell them, like, we don't know anything. Let's take it step by step. So there was a husband who reached out to me the other day, and he freaked out. His wife had, um, they found out she had a brain tumor. And he's like, we have five kids. What are we going to do? And we need her and all this stuff. And, you know, when you hear brain tumor, your world gets flipped upside down. Right. And I said, just stay calm. I know that's really hard to say, but just stay calm because we don't know anything yet. And turned out, he texted me yesterday. He's like, oh my gosh, apparently her symptoms had nothing to do with the tumor. Yes, she has a tumor. It's just like yours. It's a meningioma, but it's not pushing on anything. It's not dangerous yet. So they said, we can just keep an eye on it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, see? So what would all that worry and that stress and thinking about the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. what does that do other than make you more sick? Right. So I try to keep people calm basically right. yeah. and, uh, and let them know that I'll help guide them through every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And I just do it for as many people as I humanly can. Right. I was listening to your podcast and I was so excited when I heard you talk about Esther Hicks uh, Ask and It Is Given yeah. and I heard that you also like Joe Osteen podcast. I'm yeah. always trying to have, like I have the audiobook too, always trying to have that kind of positive mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so one of the last things I really want to touch on is for young women especially who are trying to make it into the entertainment business, like what advice do you give um, when it comes to like expecting miracles and working hard for that mm -hmm. kind of goal? Okay. So first of all, I think you're ahead of the curve, obviously, for listening to Esther Hicks mm -hmm. and for reaching for that knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a tough thing because I only know the way I did it and the way I did it also almost drove me to like my grave. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is an element of you can't get around the hard work part. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to put in the time and the hours to make it because everybody wants to do it. So you have to be that shining star that's going to go above and beyond. But at the same time, I think in having a heightened awareness and an enlightenment of sorts when you listen to an Esther Hicks and something like that is realizing that sometimes willing and pushing isn't the way. 
Mm -hmm. that there is an art to allowing and knowing that if something doesn't go your way, again, it's happening for you, not to you, that wasn't your path. And even though you really want that because it seems like it's the path that you want to be on, there's something else. And so there were a lot of things that I wanted in my career that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was so confused and and it it hurt. And now I see it in such a different way. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you want to make it in this business, you can't get around the hard work, but focus on your health as well. Make sure that there is a balance there. And um, yeah, I think that's my best advice. Last question. Um, So what you could accomplish so much already, but what is one thing like a secret desire in your heart that you're really wanting to achieve in your lifetime that you haven't necessarily talked about yet? Hmm, Good question. I wanted to be a WWE champion. (laughs) That's not happening anymore. I was going to really make a run at it. Uh Um, but I don't think it's really appropriate for me anymore with my, you know, brain tumor and my surgery and all of that. So unfortunately that dream will never be realized. (laughs) And I can say never because it really won't. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, unless there's a storyline where like I sneakily do something quick and easy and I win, that could (laughs) happen. Yeah. But I think now my life is, is less about achievements in that way Mm -hmm. and it's more about like inner peace and happiness um, because I worked so hard for so long Mm -hmm. to to do all of those things and I think things change after the things that we've gone through in our family so I mean not that I don't have dreams and goals but there's nothing specific right now yeah which is funny because I know Tony Robbins is always like, you have to have a specific goal in mind. And I'm like, right. I don't have one. Is that bad? Yeah, it'll just come to you later. Exactly. 